Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of In-Depth School and Community, a topical show that features issues confronting the Concord schools. Really pleased to have three very distinguished guests with me today. We're going to be looking at the issue of kindergarten. Now, as many of you know, kindergarten has gone through a lot of changes over the years, half day, full day, back again to half day, and what are some of the circumstances surrounding that? You may not know there's been a lot of research done about kindergarten and what's really in the best interest of kids in terms of how long that kindergarten operation should be. So let's begin the discussion with our distinguished guests. I'm going to start over to my far left with Miss Sarah Williams. How are you? And tell us what you do. I'm a kindergarten teacher at Millbrook School. Terrific. Yeah. Katie Scarpati. I'm the principal at Millbrook School. Okay. This is your second year there? This is my second year. Terrific. Yep. Yes. Uh, Pam Wicks and I'm on the school board and I helped uh, bring full day kindergarten to the Concord School District. Well, let's start with you, Pam, sure. if we could. So you want to bring full day kindergarten to the Concord School District. Why? I, I wanted to have the opportunities for all of our kids to be in school all day with their peers. We moved from Revere. They had full day kindergarten there. So my son was going from a um, half day preschool program. All his friends were going to go off to full day kindergarten and we were coming and we were going to do half day kindergarten. Um, and I just, I couldn't believe it. It was, seemed to be like, what, no half day? What is this? You're busing kids, have, where are they going after if parents are working? Um, so it was just a surprise that sure. we didn't have yeah. um, full day kindergarten in this, in this community. Well, were you concerned about you know, the quality of education in terms of if he had a half day program versus a full day? I wouldn't say concern. I think that the quality of education my boys got in kindergarten was great. I feel like they could have had a more relaxed, more play-based schedule. They would have gotten a more opportunity to get to know their classmates and their peers, get to know their teacher and their school. Um, I just, I feel like everything was rushed in that half day and ah, no recess. Too, too, too power Yeah, it was, a, it was a very engaging enrichment uh, curriculum that ended up being like smooshed. Yeah, let's talk about this play-based. Now she, she mentioned play-based activity and so Sarah, help us out, especially for our folks at home. When they say kindergarten programming it being play-based, what does that mean? So that's really taking the curriculum that we're given uh -huh. and integrating it into more of a play look, a play structure to it. And so this year we've, um, I know that I have paid a lot more attention to dedicating a solid hour to, of my day to our play. Well, time out, time out. Yeah. I mean, maybe a lot of folks are looking at that and saying, hey, wait a second. You <laughs> <laughs> sending my kid to kindergarten to play. I mean, you can stay home and play. No, no. It, and it doesn't look like the play that you would see at home. Uh -huh. um, there are designated areas in our classroom uh -huh. um, where we might have a variety of blocks and Legos and Duplos. Uh -huh. um, and then, but we're also, uh, so then we might have our housekeeping area where there's dramatic play going on. And then I have more of a math based area where they're playing with numbers and shapes and things like no that. Kidding. And before I'm sending them off, I have a planned mini lesson mm -hmm. and it might be one of my math lessons mm -hmm. or one of my writing lessons. And then we're talking about how are we going to integrate these mm -hmm. into our play areas. So I they're see. then going off and writing in all the areas and there's books in all of the areas. So it's a full day. These kids are five years old, roughly, right? Turning six. Turning yeah. six. Uh, do we do naps? We don't. <laughs> we have we have a quiet time, um, yeah. and it's nice that we usually they have recess first, then uh -huh. they go to lunch, mm -hmm. and we'll come back into the room and have quiet time where they can rest, uh -huh. they can read, they could write in their journal, um, and it's just a more relaxed about fifteen minutes of our Interesting. day. Interesting. So, Katie, I mean, you're the principal of the building. Obviously, you've been mm -hmm. watching all of this unfold. I mean, what's been your reaction to? how kindergarten has um, interfaced itself in the school system. Um, I think this year we're seeing such a dramatic change with our students who are in first grade and had the privilege of having a full day last year. And so, how so? they are just more ready to be at school. The first grade teachers found that they had to spend less time on routines and rituals in the classroom mm -hmm. and they could get right into the meat of first grade in a more uh, efficient manner. Um, the kids just have more stamina for being there. So uh -huh. last year when I started at Millbrook, it was the first year of full day kindergarten. So all of the kindergartners were staying for a full day and all of the first graders, it was their first time being there for a full day. So mm -hmm. that was two thirds of our school almost who had never been to school for a full day. And it was, 
we could feel it in the building that they were tired and sure. uh, you know so this year it was much easier transition for, the transition that's right. was actually a lot smoother yeah now when you go around and you evaluate teachers obviously you got you know uh, second grade teachers first grade teachers and kindergarten teachers correct mm -hmm. now is there a difference in terms of how they're trained and how they um, uh, interact with the students so they have the same training I think what we've started to focus on in kindergarten is this play-based model and what that looks like and how the play is purposeful and what do you do as a teacher while they're playing and so you're having conversations with the students and maybe you're asking um, some questions to help that student think about things in a different way as they're playing. So that begs the question, so we're going to hire Pam as our new kindergarten teacher, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Suppose she doesn't have that. You know, how do you help her to become more acclimated to that type of a, a, a program? So what's great is that we have six kindergartens at Millbrook and uh -huh. so that team together has done a lot of work looking at it. Um, this year we're working with a grant from the Department of Ed and nice. we have a coach who's coming in and working with Sarah and one of no our kidding. other wow, kindergarten great. teachers and yeah. the goal is that then Sarah and the other teacher will be able to share what they've learned uh -huh. through that program um, uh -huh. with the other teachers. Wow, now let's go back to you, Sarah, on this uh, play-based approach. So what's your role as a teacher? Is it different than what Katie and I might do as a second grade teacher? During that time of the day? Yeah, like, what, what, the, is the role of the teacher a little bit different? I mean, it's a loaded question, I, but I, I think it'd be great for, the audience, <laughs> and great for the audience to see that there's a clear demarcation of how you would approach students at the kindergarten level versus the second grade or fourth grade where Pam and I happen to teach. <laughs> So I think um, during that part of our day, it's definitely me thinking about how can I purposefully set up those areas right. to encourage these, um, you know, inquiry-based and how are we going to get their curiosity going and how are we going to get them to use these math concepts that we need them to be secure in in their play. How are we going to integrate that? So the other teacher, Kristen Kaufman, and I have been really uh, meeting together and planning and saying, okay, these are our lessons and this is what they need to do. How are we going to integrate that into these areas? And what are the lessons we're going to teach? You mentioned another teacher. So are, are you teaching in a team, team oriented concept? Well, I mean, no. So we're not going into each other's classrooms, uh -huh. um, but we are both working with Karen from the Department of Ed. And nice. so she's coming in and wow. observing us uh -huh. and then having, you know, That's a post-observation conference and really looking at what was happening. She's yeah. giving us ideas on kind of where to go next. And so then, so her and I will get together the beginning of the month, beginning of the week and kind of... So if Pam planning. and I are also kindergarten teachers in your mm -hmm. building, do we, are we getting the same training or just you two? Right now, Karen is working directly with us, I see. but we're bringing that information oh, out to the building. Oh, you're going to train the trainer model where exactly. you now get trained and you're going to come yes. around and help Pam and I, right? So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, the that's... model, yeah, they thought it would be better to train a teacher or two in the building and spread that information versus just picking our whole building right. um, and not paying attention to the other schools. In so the let's go back to the creative play again for a second. I think it's a really hard yep. concept for folks to get their <laughs> arms around. Um, you know, your role, you're more of a facilitator, more right. of a mentor, more of a guide. You're yep. helping students like Pam navigate their way through whatever mm, uh, 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 content domain you've created for them. Yep, yep. And so it, and when I'm walking around, you know, facilitating that play, I'm listening to the conversations going on. Uh, you know, they might be problem solving through building their tower and it right. keeps falling. Yeah. Or they might be um, having a conflict about who's going to go first. Um, you know, I want to switch. Are you going to come with me and uh -huh. go to this other area? And just learning not just the academic pieces we're integrating, but the social pieces, the really huge part of it. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. the key, yeah. Yeah. That's the key right there for full day kindergarten. And one of the reasons that I push so strongly for it is the focus in the two and a half hours of kindergarten day when when my kids went through was academics. They we have to get this math curriculum taught. We have to get this reading taught. They they need to be at these levels by the end of the year. And there there was that piece missing of that that social emotional piece that was missing. And that's what we wanted to bring to the school district with full day kindergarten is that play, that social time, that like learning how to share, learning, I mean some kids, um, especially in our school district, it's their first time being in school is mm -hmm. kindergarten. They didn't go, my kids went to preschool, but not every kid goes mm -hmm. to the preschool programs. Good so this point. is their first time, maybe they're an uh, only child or maybe they have just younger si siblings and they don't 
know how to share that space with another friend or classmate. No, um, it's great that you bring that up yeah. because uh, Katie and I had a small conversation a while back about some of the research that's going on on kindergarten and, and what works and what doesn't work. So the Yale Child Study Center, which is down in New Haven, has spent a lot of time looking at this. And one of the things they came up with is this whole notion that you, you've talked about is designing creative-based play spaces where kids learn to socialize, learn how to figure out how to solve a problem and not have the teacher direct them and tell them, well, this is how you do it. Conversely, when you're in a power-packed situation, as you've described, where all these academics are being thrust at the children, right, in a very short period of time, it's boom, 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 and the child learns only to regurgitate, to respond to, like a Pavlov's dog kind of thing, respond to whatever that stimulus happens to be. Here, the stimulus, in a sense, goes away. Yeah. So if Pam and I are in your class, there's just a, a slight movement that would lead us to believe that, oh, we should be going over here, as opposed to someone blowing the whistle and saying, okay, boys and girls, let's mm -hmm. gather around over here, because Katie's going to do a reading for us. Right. So I think that, that quiet transition has a huge effect. Yep. And then as Katie and I were talking about the, research, the actual research and looking at kids and the two various programs, now maybe our, our folks at home aren't, aren't aware of this, but by grade five or grade six, the half-day kids would catch up to the full-day kids in terms of academic preparation, cognition, and those kinds of things. However, the missing piece in all that is exactly what you brought up, Pam. The social, emotional, the resiliency, the independence, the ability to be patient and look at a problem from a number of different angles before jumping and saying, oh, here's the answer. And what they found is as these people grow up to become adults, they're much more self-sufficient. They're much less likely to become depressed. They're much more able to respond to difficult situations. And so they end up being, in a sense, more successful. So there's a lot of research that supports that. But I think, you know, for parents, it's great, too, because at least their child is now not being overloaded with all kinds of stuff that they have to somehow remember. And I think all of us as parents, you know, when you have young children, it's like you want them to have all this stuff. But when you push it, then you get into this information overload. And this whole creative play just, just takes all that away and allows for the kids to, you know, the same, play nice in the sandbox. Mm -hmm. And they have to learn that to a certain degree without us always superimposing ourselves on them. So uh, back to you, Sarah, for a second. So you've been teaching in the building for? 19 years. Wow. <laughs> and you've years. taught a variety of uh, classes. Yes, I did second grade for a few years and first, and this will be 13 in kindergarten. So you did kindergarten during the half day yes. rotations? Yeah. Can you explain to us, try to be as you know uh, discreet as you can <laughs> in terms of what some of those differences were, but talk to us a little yeah. bit about your experience as a half day teacher versus a full day. Yeah, so you know, in a half day you're planning for two and a half hours and mm -hmm. you're taking all this curriculum you're given mm -hmm. and trying to make yeah. it fit in right. two and a half hours. And we had the time for the direct instruction, but there wasn't a lot of the time for the practice. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, you, you had your group of kids and then you needed to pack them up and get ready to do right. it again and do the whole show again. Um, and so really with the full day you're just given that gift of time sure. where you can do all that direct instruction but now we have the time to practice it. Mm -hmm. And you're connecting all the pieces you've done in your direct instruction into here's how why we're learning that. And oh you wanted to write this word? Remember how we learned how to form that letter when we were doing our direct like letter formation instruction. Right. So I can bring what we've taught into sort of everyday application, you know, sure, of it. Here's sure. how we I, use it. And just uh, she happened to be my youngest son's kindergarten teacher. No kidding. And yes. I hope that was and good. Yes, it was. It was excellent. <laughs> it's just we didn't have enough time with her, you know, yeah. and we just oh. feel like so she my son did afternoon kindergarten and he'd come in in his afternoon and he would do his work and he would go home and I just think about like well, she just had 18 other kids before him. Right. And, you know, maybe there's something going on with a kid in the morning session and, ah, oh, you got to, you know. And not that your focus is, is to, but now you have one group of kids that you can really get, get to know. They get to know yes. on a deeper level and find yeah. out what makes them tick and how can we get through to them? How can we teach them? How, what, what, are, what are they going to need to be set up for first grade? Yeah. You know, I just think that there's much that more time such, to do that. Yes, yeah. it's, and that's such a gift, I think, for, yeah. for being a full day kindergarten teacher. And not to say that she did not do that. Like when it was half day, I just feel like it was just extra, like so much more. 
and you don't have as much time to, to spend. Well, you bring up a really important point, and that's the, the connection between the yeah. teacher and the student. And yeah. so again, if you're faced with a group of 18 or 20 students, you got them for, let's say, as you say, two and a half, three hours, it's like you don't have time to really get to know the child because you're so concerned about getting all this stuff mm -hmm. through. Yeah. And so, and the child becomes so, somewhat of that automaton too, just kind of going through the motions, right? Yeah. But when the full day kindergarten's in play, now it's I know who you are, mm -hmm. I care about you, I want you to be successful, and more than likely the kid is going to feel that same kind of connection and want to reach out to you. And so then you know the yeah. kinds of interventions you need to put in yeah. play yeah. for yeah. that particular child. Yeah. Yeah. You know the family that much better. Yes, yeah. you're Good more point. comfortable the reaching Excellent out with the point. family. Um, you're more able to know, oh, they have a sibling in second grade, or oh, yeah, they've got someone over in Broken yeah. Ground, and you just are able to make that connection better with the family, reach out to um, services if you're feeling like, you know, they're going to need some services, and that's sort of already in play for first grade, whereas that would have been something else that would have needed to have happened for them in first grade when, you know, something might have become more evident. Um, well, Pam's pa made the point pretty clearly, and I, I get that as a parent, but I'm just curious from your point of view, and to you too, Katie, what are you hearing from your parents about the full day program, and what's been their response? Um, well, hmm. I'm trying to think if I've had a family who had full, the yeah. half day and then the full day. That would be but even or, if you didn't, just, just the full day folks themselves. I mean, so if Pam and I are parents, right? Yeah. So we're coming in to pick up the child at the end of the day. What kinds of commentary are you getting from them? I think it's made things easier on their part where they're not thinking of childcare for the other part of the day. Sure. Um, we would have kiddos who would go to Boys and Girls Club in the morning, oh, right. come to us, yeah. um, have lunch with us, stay for two and a half hours, and then they would have to go back to Boys and Girls Club before mom and dad could pick them up at the mm. end of the day. So for them to stay mm. in one place and to feel comfortable and build that relationship with us and then maybe have to go to Boys and Girls Club for an hour or so mm -hmm. before mom and dad are out of work is just so great for them and so reassuring for the family. And I think um, our um, kindergarten kids now get to know more people in the building. So being there much all more day, familiar. Good they point. get to know a lot of staff and it makes them feel more connected. So mm -hmm. when they're coming to first grade, they're already familiar with so many people in the building and mm -hmm. they feel Part of the community. That's a really good point because, I mean, just because of the time I spent in the schools, I feel sure. like Evan yeah. had a definite advantage. He knew almost everyone yeah. in that building and everyone knew, knew Evan, but that's not the case for So that's not so, any, mm -hmm. I would have never thought of that, but that's like a really good point is like your kids, they're able to participate in the all school meetings. They're not yeah. missing those opportunities. Um, I think Evan got to go to one because he was afternoon in the afternoon and they tried to right. mix up these sure. meetings. So sure. it's, I, I think the students in full-day kindergarten, and they're part of that school community in such a greater way than they were as a half-day student. So that's, that's great. Yeah, a lot yeah. Of but that's stuff. not something I yeah. thought of because Evan was integrated into the school. Sure. Yeah. With, like, you know, being the youngest of two uh -huh. siblings, he was in that building all the time. Like, he was the, basically the assistant principal. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Before they had a real one. <laughs> <assistant principal. laughs> uh, do parents come in and complain to either of you and say, oh, well, what about academics? I mean, it's great at play stuff. It's great, and uh, he's really enjoying himself, or she's enjoying herself, but what, what about academics? Uh, I haven't I have heard any. And really? That's not great. No. And wow. we've yeah. looked at our data just very recently yeah. based on um, the previous data with half day sure. and our full day K, and we saw a significant increase of kids leaving kindergarten on grade level, both in reading and math. So nice. even wow. though it's done in this way through play, kids are still learning. The results are still there, yes. if not better. Yeah. Right. Wow. Because the curriculum yeah. hasn't changed, and the curriculum was designed for full day. Right, And right. we were smooshing it into a half Good day. Point. So the Good curriculum yeah. is, was designed for this yeah. very full day kindergarten. So. Yeah. I think they're always just amazed at what their kids can do. Uh -huh. They sort of see what they can do at home, but when they're in a structured environment and they see what their peers are doing, it really motivates them to work harder. Mm -hmm. And we just had parent-teacher conferences, and when I'm holding up the self-portrait of what they did in September next to the one they did in November, parents are just blown away. No you know? kidding. Yeah. Isn't that it's nice? It's really good. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's so great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like my, my, my youngest is a fourth grader now, so we missed all this like full-day kindergarten, but oh. it's just, it, it makes me so happy to hear yeah. the results. No, like when we get to hear that the reading scores were, have, were like, it wasn't just a small increase, it was mm -hmm. a significant it was a big increase. It, yeah. Significant yes. increase, and it's just like, this is why we. This is why I fought for this. This is why we. I wanted this for our school district because our kids deserve this. They deserve to have that opportunity. Good start. 
Yeah. Well, it There's, sounds it sounds like a win win. I mean, you got the, the scores are going up, yeah. kids are happier. Uh, they have this all this opportunity for play. There's a more seamless integration into the school itself. Yep. Katie, you were going to say? Um, and I think that you you see the kids start to take ownership of their learning. So when I've been in and and they point. use their the iPad to capture something they've done in one of the PlayStations, sure. so that they can say, look, I built this letter out of you know Legos, or I built it with this. Um, so they really are like, oh yeah. So they're just becoming independent learners already at yeah. five, and it's really powerful. Yeah, I mean that's a huge issue: the ownership and independent learner concept. I mean, it's out there in, in the media, it's out there in, in, in education land, if you mm -hmm. will, but to actually see it in operation is a different thing altogether. Yeah. And many of us went to school, uh, me especially, where that wasn't the case. It was basically the teacher was presenting information, mm -hmm. you somehow digested it and then returned it later at the, on Friday for a test or what have you. Mm -hmm. Here, yeah. we're taking much more... Uh, much more of an opportunity for students to be responsible for their own learning and to help them to navigate their way through these content-rich domains that Sarah was talking about before. But it's a whole different um, approach to the education process. And obviously, as you said, Katie, the kids are all the better for it mm -hmm. because it's something they want to do and they own it and they feel proud about what they've been able to do. Yeah. It's amazing what they learn from each other, too. To Excellent be in those point. areas, and yeah. they all come with their own strengths. Yes. And to be motivated to try something else because one of your friends is, you know, really good at it. Right. That they keep trying to do it. Um, to, for them to share information that they uh -huh. know and just have that opportunity to talk with each other in sure. one of our play areas and share that information. It's it's really cool how an idea catches on yeah. and then everybody wants to try it. That's great. Whereas if it just yeah. been the teacher saying, we're doing this yeah. art project, uh, exactly. yeah. you know, some of them would have been like, oh, I don't want to, you yeah. know, do that. But uh -huh. when it's self-initiated, sure. they're yeah. much more and it gives into doing it. Like different students a chance to shine in different ways. So who right. might not have shined in a typical right. Right. Uh, way, then, That's, oh, you know. The, excellent point. Excellent point, yeah. In yeah. the PlayStation or exactly. out at recess, and, uh -huh. and we celebrate all of that. So. That's great. Yeah. Now, talk to me, Katie, about the pre-K program, because you have that too, is right? Mm -hmm. yes. So how is that helping or hurting your uh, kindergarten program? Um, it's such a, a blessing to have it at Millbrook, because uh -huh. our students, a lot of the students who go to Millbrook stay with Millbrook um, for kindergarten. Uh -huh. So knowing them from when they're three, just helps the kindergarten teachers as yeah. they receive those kids. We know so much more about them, and sure. they um, are part of our community too. They're only there for, you know, two and a half hours a day, but we make it um, point to include them in our all school meetings, and so that they start to become familiar with other people in the building, and it's um, nice for the transition for the kids too, so that they sure. start to like get familiar in the spring mm -hmm. with, you know, who are the kindergarten yeah, teachers, and where is my room going to be next year, and what does that look like? Do, do kids who don't have that opportunity, so let's say Pam chooses not to send her child to the pre-K program, mm -hmm. if they come into kindergarten with Sarah, are they at a disadvantage? Uh, not necessarily. We do a kindergarten screening in the spring and we oh, have nice. an open house so that they get to see the classrooms. In the summer we have an entering K program so there are kids who come oh. before they've started and it gives them kind of like this is what school is like and and these are some of the skills you're going to need and it's a, just like a three-week summer program so um, that's another opportunity that they have to wow. get and there's a lot of other um, preschools that kids are coming from in the area mm -hmm. sure. it is pretty rare that we get a kiddo who hasn't been to, to no preschool kidding. at this wow. point yeah yeah in some part maybe not five days a week right. you know for uh -huh. seven hours but um, it's it's pretty rare that we haven't that we get a kiddo that uh, hasn't. Now, um, as I was telling Katie a while back, and I may have mentioned it to you, Sarah. So there is literature out there that suggests, and I think even our State Department of Education has suggested this: there should be at least one uh, uh, educational assistant for each kindergarten class of twenty kids or or so. And so, what would that do for you? I mean, is that really? Uh, oh, that would <laughs> be amazing. I don't know the answer. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> amazing, like that. That would just be a dream for yeah. every kindergarten teacher. Yeah. There's so much prep and work that goes sure. on behind the scenes because right. you have to be available for these kiddos. You've got to be planned yeah. and ready to go because you're you're entertaining eighteen five year olds. You know, and you give them a second and they're rolling off the carpet or you know their attention is across the room and to be able to have a person that can tie a shoe or help someone with a tissue sure. or um, help me prep this big project that's coming sure. up, um, keep the pencil sharpened, like all of those pieces that are behind the scenes things would just be amazing. And then I can spend more time engaging in play 
um, facilitating or helping those conversations, kids who need, need the extra help for help, whatever reason. Yes, pulling a small group, whatever yeah. it might be, um, mm -hmm. it would just be a huge benefit. Now, Katie, you and I talked about the fact that you got six kindergartens over there. So, and we know that costs will always be an issue for a school board. And so, to come back to them and say, "Give us one aid for every single kindergarten class across the district," would be prohibitive. However, as you and I were talking, maybe we might be in a position to come back and say, well, how about one aid for every two classes, which would be three in your building? Mm -hmm. So back to your friend that you're doing the program with, right. you'd have one aid, like you'd hire Pam, she'd be the aide, she'd be floating back and forth between the two of you on a need basis. That would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. And amazing. just another adult who knows the, right. the set of children that much better, and that's uh -huh. what we want is connection with kids. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To think that when I'm out, you know, sick <laughs> with the first cold of the season or whatever mm -hmm. it might be, mm -hmm. that there's someone there who kind of sees how the, day's how the day runs mm -hmm. and can inform the guest teacher on, you know, this is typically what they do, this is what it looks like, is just, it would be such a relief mm -hmm. to know that. That'd be great. I mean, there. obviously, we'll, we'll do what we can and we'll kind of see where it goes. I think, you know, our goal is obviously to, to present things to the board in the best way we can. The board always has the ultimate decision of deciding whether they can afford to do that at this point in time or not. And maybe it'll happen for next year or maybe it's something to put on the back burner and look at for, uh, you know, a year or two down the road. But clearly, it would be a great benefit. As I said, it's in the literature. Uh, it would be advisable. And if we could find a way to do that, I think it'd be, you know, very helpful for our kindergarten program. Um, are you hearing from parents in terms of um, things they want to see added to the program? Hmm. Nothing's no, coming not to mind that I can me. think of, no. no. So parents are by and large pretty satisfied with what you've been able to accomplish with kindergarten. And I would assume that at Mill, Mill Brook, it's similar to the other kindergarten programs throughout the school system. It's not like Millbrook's over here and, you know, uh, uh, let's give me another Beaver one. Meadow. Beaver Meadow. Thank you, Beaver Meadow's yeah. over there. Down in Christa yeah. McCall, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's great. I mean, I, I think it's important to have a sort of a, a, a unilateral right. approach mm -hmm. where everybody feels like if I send my kid to Beaver Meadow versus Mill, Mill Brook, that it's going to be pretty mm -hmm. close to being the same. Yeah, I think yeah. the only difference between like Mill Brook and Beaver Meadow and Chris McCoff and Abbott Downing is that it's just primary. So they like the building colors were designed to be more primary as sure. opposed. So as it's all that, but as far as like curriculum, it's mm. it's a it's the Concord School District full day yep. kindergarten program. Yep. So Millbrook's not doing their own special right. kindergarten world. It's all no. it's all collaborative yeah. and it's wow. all it's all equal. So. Wow, this this has been great. I yeah. mean, what a great conversation. Yeah. And it's so nice to hear that you know kindergarten has taken off and is so well received by parents and and the community in general. And I think as you've all expressed, uh, it really is the way to go, uh, providing for our students and giving them that opportunity to grow at their own pace, so to speak, mm -hmm. and to have that chance to experience at their own level the learning process as opposed to having it thrown at them. Yeah. So, I think that's, ahead. oh sorry, I think that's what people, the skeptics, I would say, were when they'd come to the board meetings to say like, oh, I don't know, we don't, I don't want my kids being in school, I'm home with them, I want them home with me. I think the, the fear was they were going to be sitting at desks all day mm -hmm. and doing right. worksheets. Exactly. And that is not, and I, I've, I heard it at the state, I, w I would go listen to, you know, when we were talking about funding for kindergarten sure, sure. at the state level, and I would listen to people come and testify about ki kindergartners with their boards, their privacy boards up taking tests, and I was like, that is not what we want in Concord. I don't know what, what they're yeah. doing in other school districts, but that is not what we're advocating for in Concord. We want play, we want kids being social with each other, we want them just being together and learning how to just be a, a, just a good student who loves learning. And, well, well, Pam, we want to thank you yes. for your initiative well, and your perseverance you. to help make this happen. I'm so glad that I can say that this is what I was able to accomplish on my time on the school board. So well, We appreciate it. And I'm thank you to our guests. And stay tuned for our next show. Hopefully it will be another exciting <laughs> opportunity in in-depth school and community. Thank you.